Welcome to part two of the lesson on the normal distribution. In this lesson, we will cover standard scores or z-scores, the standard normal distribution, and then how to determine area or probabilities using the TI-84. The empirical rule only applies when the value is exactly one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. This is not usually the case. Remember, the empirical rule indicates we have approximately a certain percent of the data starting with the mean and then adding multiples of the standard deviation as shown here. A standard score or z-score is the number of standard deviations a data value is from the mean of the distribution. We can plot z-scores on a special normal distribution called the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution that always has population mean of zero and population standard deviation of one. So for comparison, here we have a graph of the basic normal distribution where we have data values along the horizontal axis. If we replace the data values with z-scores, we have what's called the standard normal distribution. Where for the standard normal distribution, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. So again, a standard score or z-score is the number of standard deviations a specific data value is from the mean of the distribution. Standard scores or z-scores have the following characteristics. Z equals zero corresponds to the mean of the distribution because the mean is zero standard deviations from itself. If z is positive, the data value is above the mean. If z is negative, the data value is below the mean. To calculate the z-score for any data value x, we use the following formula. Z, the z-score, is equal to the quantity x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation where again, x is the data value. We're using mu for mean and sigma for standard deviation. We have z equals the quantity x minus mu divided by sigma. And if we take this equation and solve for x by multiplying both sides by sigma and then adding mu, we have x equals mu plus z times sigma, which means the data value is equal to the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation. We will be using both of these formulas later. So applying the empirical rule to the standard normal distribution, we know that 68% of all of these z-scores will be between negative one and positive one. 95% of all z-scores will be between negative two and positive two. And 99.7% of all z-scores will be between negative three and positive three. A z-score below negative three or above three is possible, but is very unlikely. Let's look at some examples. For number five, a variable x is normally distributed with mean 22 and standard deviation 5. We'll be finding z-scores and data values given specific information, and we're told to round to the nearest hundredth as needed. So when finding a z-score, we will use the first formula. When finding a data value, we will use the second formula. Before we begin, though, let's model the data on a normal distribution curve and compare it to the standard normal distribution already shown here. Well, I've already done this. Notice how the mean is 22, which is right in the middle. And because the standard deviation is five, each tick mark represents five units. Moving to the right, we add multiples of five. 22 plus five is 27. 27 plus five is 32. 32 plus five is 37. Going back to the mean, moving to the left, we subtract multiples of five. 22 minus five is 17. 17 minus five is 12 and 12 minus seven is five. For part A, we're asked to determine the z-score for 26. We'll notice 26 would be just to the left of 27, which would be here, which corresponds to a z-score between zero and one, obviously closer to one. Let's go ahead and find the z-score. The z-score is equal to the quantity x minus mu divided by sigma which is the data value of 26 minus the mean of 22. This difference is divided by the standard deviation of five. Simplifying, we have four divided by five, which is equal to 0 0.8. So the z-score is 0 0.8, which would be the z-score here. Next, determine the z-score for x equals 17. We'll notice x equals 17 is located here on the normal distribution. 
which corresponds to a z-score of negative 1. Let's go ahead and verify this though using our formula. The z-score is equal to the data value of 17 minus the mean of 22 divided by the standard deviation of 5, which gives us negative 5 divided by 5, which is equal to negative 1. Next, what value of x has a z-score of 1.4? So here we're determining the x value or data value given the z-score, and therefore we use the formula x equals mu plus z times sigma. Before we do this though, notice how a z-score of 1.4 would be approximately here on the standard normal distribution, which would correspond to the data value here between 27 and 32, closer to 27. So we have x is equal to the mean of 22 plus the z-score times the standard deviation, which is 1.4 times 5, giving us 22 plus 7, which is equal to 29. And notice how having an x value of 29 does match our graph. Next, we're asked to find the x value when the z-score is zero. Here, we should not have to perform any work. A z-score of zero corresponds to the mean of 22. And for our last example, we're asked to find the x value for a z-score of negative 2.3. Looking at the standard normal distribution, negative 2.3 is approximately here, which corresponds to the data value approximately here, between seven and 12, closer to 12. So we have x is equal to the mean of 22. Because the z-score is negative 2.3, we'll have minus 2.3 times the standard deviation of five, giving us x equals 22 minus 2.3 times five is equal to 11.5. 22 minus 11.5 is 10.5. So a z-score of negative 2.3 corresponds to an x value or data value of 10.5, which is this data value here. And now let's talk about finding percentages. And now let's talk about determining percentages or area with normally distributed variables on the TI-84. We will be using the TI-84 to determine percentages or probabilities with normally distributed variables. I do have other videos that show how to use tables to determine percentages or probabilities with normally distributed variables. To find the area or probability or percentages on the TI-84 graphing calculator, we first press the second key followed by the distribution key, and then we use the arrows to choose the second option, normal CDF, press enter, and then the calculator will ask for the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. Using the TID4, we can use either x values or z-scores. If we use z-scores, remember the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Let's look at some examples. For number six, a variable is normally distributed with a mean of 22 and a standard deviation of three, which I've already set up here on the normal distribution curve. Use your graphing calculator to find each of the following areas. Write answers in decimal form rounded to the nearest thousandth. Finding area, probabilities, and percentages are the same, but in this case, because it asks for area, we will express the answer in decimal form. So notice how 22 is actually the mean here, and we're asked to find the area to the left of the mean what well, we know from the empirical rule, 50% of the data is less than the mean. 50% as a decimal is equal to 0 0.5, and therefore the area under the curve to the left of 22 is 0 0.5 or 1 half. Next, we're asked to find the area to the left of 18. This one is going to require the calculator. Notice 18 does not fall on the mean plus or minus multiples of the standard deviation. 18 is approximately here between 16 and 19. Again, we're asked to find the area to the left of 18, which is this area here. 
which would be the same as the percentage of data that is going to be less than 18, express as a decimal. So going to the calculator, again we press second and then distribution which is here. Select option 2 for normal CDF, so we can either arrow down or just press 2. I have a newer version of the 84, so notice how it's asking for the lower bound, upper bound, mu, and sigma. If you don't have this screen, you simply enter the same information from left to right, separated by commas. Because we're looking for the area to the left of 18, we have to exaggerate the lower bound, which I think of as the left bound. Notice how I've entered negative 99999. Enter. The upper bound is a data value of 18. Enter. Mu is the mean of 22. Enter. Sigma is a standard deviation of 3. Enter. Enter again. So again, if you have an older T84, you would enter the same information just in this form here, separated by commas. And now we press enter again, and it gives us the area we're asked to round to the thousandths, which is three decimal places, and therefore the area to the left is approximately 0.091. If it asked for the probability, we'd express this as a percentage as 9.1%. But because it asked for area, we give the answer as a decimal. For part C, we're asked to find the area to the right of 19. Notice 19 is one standard deviation below the mean. We do not want to use the empirical rule though because those are approximate values. We're told to use the graphing calculator which will give us more exact values. But because we're looking for the area to the right of 19, we're looking for the area on the right side, this area here. So going back to the calculator, we press the second var for the distribution menu, option two for normal CDF. Because we're looking for the area on the right, the lower bound is going to be the data value of 19, so we press 19, enter. For the upper bound, because we're looking for the area to the right, we need to exaggerate the upper bound with some large positive value like 99999, enter. Again, the mean is 22, enter. And the standard deviation is three, enter, enter and enter again. To the thousandths place value, we have approximately 0 0.841. Next, we're asked to find the area to the right of 28. The data value of 28 is two standard deviations above the mean, and we're looking for the area to the right, which is this area here. So going back to the calculator, Again, we have second vars for the distribution menu, option two. The lower bound is now 28, enter. The upper bound, 99999 still works, some large value to the right. And the mean and standard deviation are the same. Keep pressing enter, and we get the area of approximately 0.023. And for the last example, we're asked to find the area between 18 and 30. So 18 is just to the left of 19, and 30 would be just to the left of 31, approximately here. So we're looking for this area here. Going back to the calculator one last time. Second VARs for distribution, option two. The lower bound now is 18, I should write that down, this is 18, and this is 30. So the lower bound is 18, the upper bound is 30, and mu and sigma are the same. We have approximately 0 0.905. So let's take a look at one more question a patient recovery time from a particular surgical procedure is normally distributed with a mean of six days and a standard deviation of 1.6 days. Use your graphing calculator to answer the following questions. Write your answer in percent form rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent. So again here, because we're looking for a percentage, not area, we express the answer as a percentage. 
I've already modeled data on the normal distribution shown below where the mean is equal to 6 and the standard deviation is 1.6. For part A, what is the probability of spending less than 9 days in recovery? Well, 9 days would be approximately here, just to the left of 9. The probability is equal to the area to the left expressed as a percentage. So going back to the calculator, second vars, option 2, because we're looking for the percent that is less than 9 days, we need to exaggerate the lower bound. Negative 99999 works well. Enter. The upper bound is 9. Enter. The mean is 6. Enter. Standard deviation is 1.6. Enter. Enter. And enter again. We want the percent to one decimal place which means you round the decimal to three decimal places, and because we have a six in the fourth decimal place, you round up to 0 0.970. Well, 0 0.970 as a percentage is 97.0%. For part B, what is the probability of spending more than six days in recovery? Well, notice six days is the mean, and we know 50% of the data is above the mean when we have a normal distribution, and therefore we should recognize the probability is going to be 50%, which also means the area under the curve here would be 0 0.5. So the answer is 50%. For part C, what is the probability of spending between six and nine days in recovery? So again, six days is the mean, nine days would be approximately here. So we're looking for the probability that the recovery will take between six and nine days. So we need to find this area and then convert to a percentage. Second, VARS, option two. The lower bound is six, enter. Upper bound is nine, enter. Sigma and mu are the same. So enter, 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 and enter again. Because we have a six in the fourth decimal place, we round to 0 0.470 to three decimal places. And 0 0.470 as a percentage is 47.0%. We do need the zero in the tenth place value because that does indicate we rounded to the tenth place value. And now for the last question, if 500 patients have this surgical procedure, how many can expect to recover between five and seven days? So five days would be approximately here. Seven days would be approximately here. So if we find this area and convert to a percent, we'll know what percent of 500 patients would recover between five and seven days. So going back to the calculator one last time, Second, VARS, option two, lower bound is five, enter, upper bound is seven, enter, everything else is the same. To three decimal places, we have 0 0.468, which is equal to 46.8%. So to answer the question, we need to find 46.8% of 500 patients. We convert the percent to a decimal, which we already know is 0 0.468, multiply by 500, round to the nearest patient. 0 0.468 times 500 is 234. So we can expect 234 patients out of 500 to recover between five and seven days. I hope you found this helpful.